Transfer all energy to the shields. Keep a quantum diffusion mask running for as long as possible. Captain, you called me. There's yes. an emergency. I'm glad you're here. As you can see, we're getting attacked by four Borg ships in their characteristic diamond attack pattern. At the moment, they can't see us, but quantum diffusion mask is hiding us. But after the coherence time, they'll be able to see us and shoot us. So we have to act as fast as possible. But as soon as we shoot them, they'll be able to, able to see us too. And we only have three laser beams on our three ships. So we need to attack all of them. Do you have anything that could help us? I see the problem, but there might be a way to solve this. The scientists have been developing a non-linear material that is able to convert three incoming beams into four outgoing beams, if the configuration is right. All we need to do is place it in between us and the enemy, navigate our ships so that each of our ships can hit the enemy with the beams crossing in the material, and then a fourth beam will be generated hitting the fourth ship. It's very risky, but it's a good idea, I think. It's the best we have. Let's do it. This worked like a charm. It was amazing. But now you have to tell me how this is possible. Gladly. Follow me to the laboratory. We have a scaled down version of what just happened right here. You can see there are three rays going into the material, but many more are coming out. Consider the wave vector picture for the created beam we used. Add the left and right vector and subtract the middle one. This yields the fourth beam with the same wavelength as the other three. Because they are intersecting and not propagating in the same direction, it's called non-collinear, and because four beams are participating, it's called four-wave mixing. So uh, non-collinear four-wave mixing. And actually, you don't only get this combination, but all possible additions and subtractions of the three original wave vectors that yield a photon of the fundamental wavelength. This also includes combinations of more than three photons which can be seen as further interaction of newly created wave vectors with each other. Another way of looking at this is to view the two beams from the sides as waves that interfere to create a transient grating on which the third beam is diffracted on. Wow! Can we use this for any other purpose? Yes. Last time you were down here, I showed you how to measure the length of a short laser pulse with an autocorrelator. Using a similar setup here, we can go one step further and measure the complete temporal structure of the pulse with a frog, a frequency resolved optical gating. We use a spectrometer to measure the spectrum as well as the signal from a nonlinear optical process that is generated from the pulse itself. To achieve complete knowledge of the temporal structure, a higher order nonlinear process than the second harmonic generation has to be used. And one example is this setup here, where the process is a third order nonlinear effect and it's called the transient grating method. You said that you had to develop this new material for the main lasers. What is the effect of the choice of material on this process? Here, I can show you. If we change the material from the glass to a crystal, we don't only get the spots of the same color, but new colors created due to second order mixing. And if we increase the intensity, we get many many spots in a nice regular pattern. Using that, we could take out a whole fleet of ships. <laughs> <laughs> if they attack in a very particular way, yes. Thank you very much for showing me this. I should come down here more often. It's always very interesting. Always happy to save the ship with non-linear optics again. <laughs>